Hi, it's Dwyer. February 24th, 2023. DwyerCrime.blog, a free site. Also, keepingitfree.blogspot.com, a free site. Let's talk about the Alex Murdaugh murder case. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just point out, a lot of what I'm going to say here is my opinion. The trial is ongoing. But it's my belief that Alex Murdaugh is guilty of killing his wife and his son. Now, there's a certain genius to Alex Murdaugh's defense. Right? His defense, distilled down and summarized here, is that he has an expensive and long-standing opioid addiction that has led him to defrauding some people, right? An insurance company, some clients of his law firm. That lifestyle of his, which he admits to, has attracted the wrong crowd, with many people having good reason to try to hurt him. Maybe in trying to do so, they killed his wife and his son. Now understand, he makes a mistake here. If you look long enough at these murder cases, you'll often find that a sophisticated defendant, and Murdaugh is a lawyer, has made a mistake that they can't back away from. Has made a mistake that they can't blame the state for. Now, make no mistake, Murdoch plans this out. Let's summarize the crime so people have an overview. In my opinion, he kills his wife and son by the dog kennels, which is on his property a little way away from the family home, right? He then grabs his wife's phone he jumps in his SUV to go to his mother's house. He dumps the wife's phone out the window on his way to his mother's house. He calls people so that they can say he was calm on the phone. There was nothing unusual. He stays at his mother's house for a few minutes so he can make the claim that he was there when things happened at the dog kennels. He returns home. Now here's where he starts to lose it. Right, he's returning home. He has a plan where he's going to find the bodies and he's going to be distraught but he can't go directly to the dog kennels, right? His wife's not supposed to be at the dog kennels. She's supposed to be at the family home. If everything is normal, then he should go to the family home, which is what he does, right? So he goes to the adjacent family home. Then he goes to the kennels. Right, looking for his wife, you and I know privately planning on finding the body. Right, planning on having some story where he was out at mom's house, then he came back, was at his house looking for his family, then he found the bodies at the nearby dog kennels. Here is his big mistake. If I were a juror, just off this mistake, I would know that he's guilty. Murdaugh didn't give himself enough time to discover the bodies and to check their pulses as he claimed in the 911 call. Right, His story is that he shows up at the dog kennels. Now, his wife's body is 30 feet away from his son's body. 
The prosecution believes he shoots his son. His wife makes a run for it. He then chases her and guns her down 30 feet away. Well, we know exactly what time his SUV arrives at the dog kennels because the SUV has a reporting system. The SUV arrives at the dog kennels at 10.05 and 57 seconds. Right, 10.05 and 57 seconds. Just 17 seconds later. 17 seconds later. He calls 911 with the pulse story. 17 seconds is simply not enough time to leave the SUV to find your family's bodies, to go to your son, to check his pulse, to confirm that he's no longer with us, then to walk the 30 feet, to go to your wife, to check her pulse, to confirm that she's no longer with us, to get over the initial shock, right? I'm telling you, for a lot of us, if you show up and you see dead bodies, there's going to be a moment there where you're like, what? You know, you're going to be puzzled. Well, here we're supposed to believe that Murdoch does all of that, Get over, gets over the initial shock, checks the pulses of two people 30 feet apart, confirms they're both dead before he calls 911. Let me also say, too, the 911 call is damning. It's about halfway through the call that the dispatcher says, look, don't touch anything. Right? We need for our investigators to have an opportunity to take evidence at the scene. And it's at that point, right, well into the 911 call, on the fly, I believe, that Murdaugh says, well, I checked for pulses. I've already touched them. Words to that effect. Right, folks, that doesn't make sense with the timeline. In other words, he has everything figured out here, the clever story, right? Leaving the scene with his SUV and calling people, dumping his wife's phone, visiting a parent. He has all of that figured out. But the last part, when he goes to the kennels to find the bodies, he doesn't give himself enough time to find the bodies and to check their pulses. Understand too, the 911 call has his voice on it, right? How was he able to call 911 a scant 17 seconds after arriving at the kennels? And I believe we know the answer to that already, don't we? He already knew his son and wife were gone. He may have checked the pulses before he leaves after killing them. Right? He showed up at the kennels at the end of this long planned out double murder. Got excited and called 911. It didn't cross his mind that he needed to wait a minute for the story to be credible. That's how I see it. I encourage people to look at the facts of this case. I believe this is a glaring hole in the defense that should be prioritized by the prosecution. 
in their closing. In other words, the prosecution might want to lead with this. I believe it's even more important than, you know, the son's, uh, you know, internet posting where dad's voice is heard shortly before the murders. I believe this is so glaring, people get it. Right? The entire story of him leaving the house, going to the kennels in his SUV, then finding the bodies is false. And the only person who could have faked that is him. And why would it be false? How could he know 17 seconds after arriving at the kennels that his son and wife were shot to death? And that's because he's the person who did the shooting. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there are alternative facts, other facts, exculpatory evidence that you want to raise here, please feel free to do so. All I ask people to do is to ask themselves, is Murdoch's story credible? He's already taken the stand and he's already admitted that he initially lied to police. Right, folks? The problem here is the lie when he finds the body, supposedly, let's put the word finds in quotes, is too big to cover up. It doesn't make sense. There's no reasoning here where you could say, hey, you know, I panicked. I was confused. Right? I'm guessing if you found the bodies of two of your family members, your memories would be clear. If you claimed you got out the SUV, found the bodies, checked the pulses, I'm guessing that would take you longer than 17 seconds. Here, we're supposed to believe that Murdoch, 17 seconds after arriving at the kennels, checked the pulses of two people 30 feet apart. And you can imagine how bloody the scene is. Right? These folks have been shot to death. In my opinion, it's a fake story. Folks, Murdoch not only lied to the police, as he has admitted doing on the stand, he's lying to you now. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by. You can find us at thewirecrime.blog, which is also available on Apple, on Amazon, on Google Podcasts where most podcasts are. Thanks for stopping by. I missed something.